So session two. So yesterday we have seen a basic introduction of your steel structures and what are the advantages and disadvantages of your steel structures over concrete structures and uh, your ingredient of steel, how it is uh, contributing to the strength of steel also we have seen and your manufacturing process, hot rolled and cold form sections and what's the difference between your reinforcing steel and structural steel your grades of steel and what are the types of uh, structural elements which can be suggested for steel structures and uh, introduction to your industrial structure and how your trusses and why trusses are being suggested for uh, industrial structures and truss geometry how it is contributing to the low transferring concept different types of trusses in addition to that what are the loads coming on to your dress and how to deal with that and the effect of wind and how to calculate the wind load on your trusses and different type different load combinations and we have discussed the worst case of load combination to be considered for designing a steel structure and load factors along with the load combinations also we have seen and different deflection limits for the industrial structures for vertical members and lateral. So today we are going to see the uh, design aspects of roof truss. So, so design aspects, before moving into the design aspect, just we need to know what are the components of a truss. Not only a roof truss, simply it is a truss. Yesterday we have discussed Truss is not only meant for roof, it is for, uh, it can be used for supporting your floor also, deck slab in bridges and floors in your buildings. And or in addition to that, you can employ the same for your uh, roofing uh, structures also. So here the components of roof truss, so the base, uh, bottom most element is your lower cord or your bottom cord and the Planting one, sloped one is called as your upper cord. And these bottom cord and upper cord can be supported by a bracing. And also by the, the connections between your top cord, bottom cord and your bracing will, will be done by means of a gusset plate. So this gusset plate is the one which will be connecting your uh, truss members together at the joint by means of connections like bolt, welt or river joint. So mostly in steel uh, trusses, we will be suggesting for bolt and well connections only. So in addition to bracing, if needed, the diagonal bracing can also be given. So framing the roof truss, it is not uh, very strict to that. You have to use the particular type of uh, truss for a uh, structure. If the structure is having any additional loads, we need to... Uh, uh, calculate that exact load and in concrete structure wherever your tension will be coming you will be giving you the giving the reinforcement bars and wherever your shear uh, shear is more you will be giving the uh, stirrups right so it is based on the type of loading for that particular structure no hard and fast rules that only at the support we need to give the stirrup so the, in, even near the span uh, near the span if you are getting more amount of shear then you can give the more uh, stirrups in that area. Similarly, in trusses, not only the two, uh, two inclined member, one base member is alone sufficient. If your trusses needing, need uh, uh, additional bracings based on the type of load, it is our uh, criteria as a design engineer, we need to uh, analyze the uh, truss, where your truss is having more amount of tension, where you need to support the truss by means of bracing even as per your design you need additional bracing over here then you are very well you can proceed with your design so no hard and fast rules only this type of press should be given so, wherever you are having additional tension you need to enhance the strength of your dress the more and more bracing you are able you can uh, give right so this is a, a picture showing you the uh, basic uh, truss skeleton Right, why I am calling it as a skeleton, it is not having any roofing material and the structure is not yet finished. So it is called as a truss skeleton. 
so here your vertical members are there so the vertical members can be a channel section or it can be a tubular or a circular tubes can also be done so this vertical member can be connected by means of a inclined top cord here you may see the bottom cord is absent right in this uh, structure the bottom cord is not available why that may be a, there may be a requirement they need a, a taller headroom headroom means the floor to the height of that particular room so the they need a uh, higher uh, headroom so to enhance that uh, higher headroom we we are avoiding the bottom cord right so that is up to our the design which one is needed which one is not recommended which one is not required for the design it is full and full based on the load coming onto the dress right so here uh, in this uh, picture we have seen the dress will be having a bottom cord but it is vice versa here the bottom cord is absent since they need a uh, larger headroom here the bottom cord may be removed so if the bottom cord is removed then how we have to support the structure here in the top cord itself they are having the uh, i section members you can see right these are all the i sections so even in this design also it is not uh, mandatory to have a solid i section here you can see the openings here right so by providing this openings your uh, uh, structural weight will be uh, less and based on the design only they are giving this opening so it, the design will be economical and in the same way your structure will also be strong enough and through this and above that we are having the purlins so this purlins will be maybe of z shaped purlins or angular purlins so over this we will be covering with a roof sheet so the components of a steel truss basically it will be having the uh, upper cord and bottom cord and all based on the design you can change based on the requirement right and these are the assumptions before uh, doing the truss analysis we are going to see the assumptions of truss so the first and foremost uh, assumption is your all the joints are pin jointed your trusses are pin jointed so why pin jointed pin jointed element pin joints will not transfer any moment your moment at that point will be zero right so the truss all the joints are pin jointed here in this picture you can see uh, just two bracings are connecting at the bottom cord element right so your connection should be in such a way that your central line should coincide with the system line of the bottom cord we have seen your truss is basically a triangular <laughs> excuse me triangular member uh, triangular elements so at the connections maximum four member per connection will be there right so in this the system line or the central line of the element should coincide at the center even if it is not coinciding with the center line of the bottom cord at least it should fall within the bottom cord not like in the second case in the second case you can see the center line is going beyond the bottom cord member if your structure is maintained like this this is the correct way of uh, doing the assembling your trusses so if and only if your trusses assemble your joints are assembled in such a way your structure will behave your truss will behave like a pin jointed element right so that your moment will be avoided if the moment is zero what happens any idea in your Uh, concrete structure beams and all there right if there is no moment because of the moment only you are getting the depth of your beam right that is the design criteria for arriving the size of your beam so if you are having more moment your depth will be more so this is the secret behind why your trusses are having very uh, smaller section because they don't have any moment why they are not having the moment because of this type of connection so while uh, assembling your trusses we need to see to that the system line is falling within the center line of your bottom cord or the element 
even if it is not possible at least it should fall within the element so that it has a eccentricity that should be less than half of the height of your uh, connecting element here this is the height or depth you can say so even that the eccentricity should be within the uh, should be less than h by 2 this is the wrong practice of doing the connection wrong practice in the sense it will create additional moments eccentricity will be more so that additional moments will be uh, generated so that you can get a higher sections that is not economical and it is not recommended for a truss design also right and so what is the economical design of a truss so truss in an arrangement it will be having a span right in yesterday we have seen so the major uh, uh, benefit of truss is uniform distribution of load and even and long span distribution it can uh, do the truss can do right so this is the span and this is called as a rise or height or depth of your truss from the bottom corner to the peak of your truss is called as your rise or depth or height of your truss so if your span gets increased your truss height should also be more if and only if you are increasing the uh, height of your dress you can span up to larger span and your bay width bay width in the sense back to this dress next uh, the same arrangement back to the dress the distance between the uh, two dresses is called as your bay width right so if your span gets increased your truss height also will get increased and your bay width also so we need to uh, keep in mind the span to depth ratio of your truss should fall within 10 to 15 span of your truss divided by the depth depth in the sense this rise this should be in the ratio between 10 to 15 if you are following this ratio you can get the economical design of your trusses so the long span bridges uh, with the economical uh, spacings uh, for your uh, deck slabs can be uh, uh, provided by means of following the equation the height of truss should be equal to four times the bay width so this for in this case the case two that is long span bridges and long span uh, industrial structures we have to follow the equation height of truss should be equal to four times the bay width so the spacing between the truss multiplied by the four will give you the height of your trusses so in industry for a normal uh, un, uh, just a factory building your economical span is 6 meter so the span should be 6 meter if your span is more than uh, 6 meters then we need to give uh, go for a higher section and all and also the bay width bay width means back to back dress the back to back dress the spacing also you should maintain 6 meter so that uh, the parallel designs your uh, upper cord members your bottom cord members will be in a within a limit else we need to take care of the design again you will be getting larger section so the economical span recommended for uh, design of trusses six meters so if in case of uh, uh, subdivided form of truss so subdivided form of truss means here you are having the members right tension members so whenever you are having a larger moments and large load need to be supported by the truss we need to divide your truss by means of this uh, bracing right here this is the span so if your span gets increased again your number of bracing should also get increased so that we can maintain the uh, equal distribution of your load so for spans up to 15 meters can also be possible but it will be uh, for uh, unusual uh, very uh, massive structures we can go for that anyway if you are increasing the span all the elements your height everything we need to take care so that your structure should be economical and the compression members so the compression members so compression members are the sorry yes 
So in this uh, trusses, your bottom cord will be under tension and your top cord will be under compression. So the compression members, what are all the types of uh, elements we can suggest? So if you are suggesting for a plate element, simply plate element, if you are suggesting, anyway, we have uh, already discussed for compression members, you will be going for a channel section, right, for columns and compression members. But in uh, along the bracings, if you are feeling compression, so by the time if you are going for a simple plate, flat plate or a simple plate means just it is a plate, uh, uh, no more angles, eye sections or beams. Just if it is a simple plate you are employing for taking care of the compression members, you will be facing the buckling effect due to the height of trusses. So if your height get increased, right, if the height get increased, the, com the bracings, the compression force on the bracings will also get increased. At that time, if you are providing a simply a flat plate, it will get buckle, right? In your uh, concrete design, you might have come across the long column buckles. Here, your cross section of your uh, plate is very much lesser than the uh, dimension, the lateral dimension of your uh, flat plate. So, it will tend to buckle. So, how to avoid that? If you are, uh, if you are going for eye section, or a channel section, it will be uneconomical for you. So, how to avoid that? The same plate members can be arranged one after another that can be clubbed together by means of welding. Right? So, the same plate can be laterally restrained because it is bending in, the, in this direction. So, you have to avoid that bending. What can be done? So, here you can attach three more flat plates and the same flat, three uh, sections sandwich plates can be employed for this compression member. In another way, the flat plate and another side you can attach one more flat plate by means of welding so that you can form a T-section and you can uh, employ for the compression members. So, it is to our need, you can change the uh, shape of your compression members or any members of your truss to make your truss economical. So, the flat plate to avoid the lateral buckling, you can attach few more members or in that opposite lateral direction, you can enhance one more plate so that you can achieve the, uh, you can avoid the buckling effect of your compression member. So, these are called as the composite structures or these are called as your stiffened compression members. Stiffened, this is stiff, stiffened and this is composite. Yes. So, in yesterday we have seen your Pratt truss, right? So, the same practice using for uh, employed for uh, gravity load and for uplift load. Yesterday, we have discussed how the arrangements have been changed to take care of the same span truss, uh, which can take uh, different loads by a small a change in the arrangement of your tie members. Right? So, here while during the erection, erection means while lifting using the crane or when you are come across your wind loads, yesterday we have discussed about wind loads, right? So, wind loads during the suction. So, usually your trusses will be designed for the gravity load. In case of wind, you will be facing the uplift loads. So, some somebody will be pulling up like that. And similarly, in case of erection, when you are using a crane for erection of your trusses, by the time also your uplift load will be acting on your trusses. So, there may be a stress reversal, right? Here, we have designed for a tension members and top cord is for a compression member. But you are applying for uplift load. What happens? So, compressive stress initially it was there. While during uh, erection, you will be having stress gets reversed. That means, tension stress will be accommodated on the top cord member. By the time to avoid uh, the failure of your trusses and due to take care of your wind load because your wind may hit your building in any direction and to take care of your wind load you can provide counter bracing counter bracing means it will balance the effect of uplift right so this is designed for uplift load and if you are using the same to erect erection means the the crane points will be fitted at some two points of your trusses and uh, erect so during that uplift load it need to uh, stable the truss should be stable. So, 
to avoid the failure of dresses and to counteract or to balance the effects of uplift you are giving a counter bracing so in addition to the slanting members you are giving one more uh, uh, slanting member uh, in a full layer the entire stitch you are giving the cross bracing so here you can see this is your top card and these are all your counter bracings so counter bracings are the one which will counteract or balance your uplift loads and it this will helps in um, uh, avoiding the damage of your uh, thrust during stress reversal so the suction force whenever it get exceed over your uh, dead load your lower cord will be under compression and your upper cord will be under tension to counteract that we are giving this counter bracing and now we have seen what are the different types of uh, loads coming onto your structure and what are the design aspects on your truss and how to select the sections for the uh, suitable uh, type of uh, stresses. So in the top cord, it is a compressive stress, bottom cord is a tensile stress. So the tension members, you can give I sections. The tension members like a beams or tension cords. So in a small structure, you can give uh, flat plates and angular plates, but for a large span structure, your tension members can be I sections. Right? So the, where your tension members will be at the bottom cord and also at the uh, connections between your two trusses. Bay we have seen right two between two trusses, there will be a connection connecting member that is also will be under tension. So that connecting member can also be an I section. So for that only. The eye sections are recommended. So, only it is mentioned as a star. But we have to avoid the flat plates. Flat plates should be avoided for a uh, tension members. Why flat plates are avoided? So, your plates get disordered. Disordered or it may get damaged. Because it is your thickness is very much less. And similarly, for your compression members also, your flat plates are not recommended. But you can use the Stiffened flat plates or composite flat plates can be done. But for attention members, surely we have to avoid flat plates. And compression members like your columns, your channels, angular sections and tubular sections are very much recommended for your compression members. And for bracings, bracings, the previous one we have seen, right? The bracing, we can have flat plates and angles. For short span with a lighter load, a single angle section is recommended so that it can able to take care of all the tensions and compression members. It can take very much uh, load transferring capacity, the angle section, one of the most economical section uh, being recommended and being suggested for the uh, trusses. Right? And for long span, you can have the same angle, but you need to do use a double angle. Back to back, you can fit your angle section. So, if you are fitting, fitting uh, back to back, it will behave like a T. Right? So, back to back double angle is a uh, uh, and here is your uh, connection. So, the connection uh, we have seen the connections between your your uh, top members, bracings and all. You are uh, connecting by means of a gusset plate, right? So, the gusset plate is the one which is enhancing. Uh, it, it is the joint where your trusses will be acting as a pin jointed element. In the previous slide, we have discussed the system line has to coincide at the uh, bottom uh, cord member. So, the connections for a flexible connection is bolt. Why it is mentioned as a flexible connection? Because easily you can dismantle it and you can use it for, in, in other location, you can transfer your truss and you can uh, fit your truss over there and you can bolt it. So, your bolted connections are very much flexible and no wastage will be there. Uh, already your steel is a very a good recycle uh, recyclable material. Your bolted connections, if your trusses are framed, you can shift it anywhere and you can rebolt it again. Uh, but for a permanent structures like your bridges and for uh, commercial structures and industrial structures, you can 
suggest both weld and bolt. The same gusset plate, you can see the weld connection over here. See the finish, the very smooth finish can be achieved in your uh, welded connection. Right? So the same gusset plate. Here you have seen the bolted connection. See how much holes are required. Here the gusset plate is connected to the bottom member by means of weld and the inclined members also connected by means of weld with the gusset plate. So here you can see the arrangement how they are uh, fitted so that your eccentricity will be your system line will be falling within the junction. So here if it is not done your eccentric moments should be your eccentric moments will be created. So here we need to see to that the connection uh, the joint should be uh, falls within the bottom part. Else we need to face the eccentric moments. Eccentric moments means the distance between your the center line and your uh, point of junction. So if that uh, eccentricity is there then you will be getting the moment. So the eccentric moment will increase the size of your section. Even though your trusses are pin jointed, this check to be done at all the joints, whether all the joints are having uh, zero moments or not. That has to be uh, done at the every stages of your uh, design of trusses. Yes. And next is your stability of truss. So we have seen your compression element, your tension members, your cord, and how to uh, make your uh, truss stable. So when your stability of truss required, so when it is subjected to a lateral load. Right? So the wind loads on uh, gables will also exert a lateral force which will be perpendicular to your truss. So wind can hit your, it, it can be along the, uh, you can see here, direction of lateral wind. So it can hit your truss in this direction or in this uh, direction. So we need a lateral bracing system at the roof and also at the uh, columns so that your truss will be stable and it can withstand your wind load. Here also you can see the first uh, bay is having the bracings at the roof. This portion is called as eaves. This portion is called as eaves here, the edge column, right? So between two bay. We can call it as a eave. So at the eaves also we have to give. So in simple you can remember at the first way of hitting your wind, the first truss and the last truss and also this direction, lateral direction, the first way and this last way should have the bracings. So this lateral bracings on the roofs and also on the eaves are recommended to take care of your wind load. Right? So it is very important and uh, uh, while designing the bracings, each panel point should be braced. All the panels, that means edge panels, all the panels should be braced. You can see here at the uh, pictured, uh, pictured slope and also at the eaves, here all the panels are getting braced. So usually based on the effect of wind load, we can calculate the number of bracing, right? So, no need to give X bracing for all the elements. Here in this press, you can see. Right? In between the members, if the effect is less, so no need to provide. At least for a safety purpose, we can give. If your uh, load is minimum, your wind effect is minimum, just for a minimum uh, uh, amount of uh, bracing, if you want to give, you can give either only bracing in one direction also. But if your wind is heavy, you have to give at both at the roof and also at the eaves and also at the bottom cord member. Here you can see lateral bracings at the level of bottom cord, right? So why you are giving this many bracings, how to understand the effect of wind? Here you can have the example of your chair, wooden chair or your uh, table at your college, right? So it is also one kind of uh, truss, your writing tables, wooden writing tables. So it is also having two uh, cords at the ends. So these two cords are connected by your uh, tie members. And at the bottom, at the foot, right? Also the two edge members are being connected by a 
card member or a tie member. So to enhance the stability of your uh, table, the uh, bars are connected at the uh, foot area and also at the top. So the same way in a, in a wooden chair also you can see it will be having four legs. In one side you can see it will be supported by a horizontal member or like a bracing member. In old wooden chairs you, can, you might have seen this. So the same concept to take care of later load and to avoid over deflection. Right, your stress due to the dead load, the dead load, your eaves, your column should be strong enough. It should not bend and move, it should not move away, right? This column to this side and this column to this side. If overload is done, it should not move away from your uh, position. So that you need external uh, bracings at the ends. And also uh, the wind load, the main purpose of giving at the roof is to overcome your uh, suction pressure. Yesterday we have seen, right? The suction pressure. So it will prevent your roofing element. Uh, it will hold your roofing element together and it will withstand your suction pressure so that your uh, roof will not be pushed, pulled out by the effect of wind. So here also, uh, the same bracing uh, are playing the role in case of a stress reversal. In the first slide, we have seen stress reversal, right? So here, X bracing, since the wind is pulling upwards, your stresses will be getting reversed. To avoid that also, you are giving the X bracing on the roof and also on the Right? Yes. And here is your uh, bracing of stresses. So, so the stability to enhance the stability you are giving lateral bracing on roofs and also at the eaves here in this picture you have seen uh, the transmission line towers so mostly in open areas you will be having the effect of wind more right so in order to take care of that uh, wind load effect you can see the transmission lovers uh, towers with cross bracings on every uh, direction so on the lateral direction, on the wind facing direction and also at the hands of your uh, uh, towers also we can see the bracings. So everything is based on how much load your truss is going to carry. So the analysis part is very much important. So the load analysis of your structure of your truss can be done by means of your method of joints or method of section by manually. Else for industrial structure for faster approach we will be using SAT Pro, ETAS or SAP soft, uh, sorry, SAP, SAT Pro, SAP and ETAS or any of the software can be used to find the, uh, to analyze the stress and find the uh, compressive stress, tensile stress on your truss. Right. So here you can see the windmill. In uh, just a decade uh, before you can see uh, a solid cylindrical structure or a hollow cylinder will be used to support your uh, windmill. So this windmill, nowadays it is outdated, this uh, stem is outdated, your truss is playing a major role in uh, uh, in avoiding your wind and it will hold your uh, lateral load, lateral load in the sense the vibrations created by this fan that can also be evenly distributed to the foundation and economy, here you can see the solid structure this much tall and the weight of your structure will be more. So your steel will be uh, measured by means of its weight. Per ton only, you will be charged in the market. So if a solid section is there, your charges will be more. Your weight will be more. So you have to pay a large amount of money for the stem alone. So this stem is required just to support your fan, right? But due to, uh, to overcome this uh, issues, your trusses are replacing this solid stem. So, stresses very well play a very well uh, good transfer of your tensile forces, compressive forces and also the, it can manage your stress reversal. It can manage your wind loads also. So, so since you are using the truss, your solid elements are replaced. So, your light weight of your supporting element can be achieved. So, less tonnage of steel can be achieved. 
so that lesser at uh, lesser economy you are giving a effective design okay. so these are the uh, economical design of trust and how your bracings are contributing in the lateral load uh, resistance